Good morning team, how you doing? It's the end of June, on the top of the South Island New Zealand, in Tasman, this is Mapua, a beautiful township with an estuary that goes right out. Today we're going to do just that. We're going to use the tide, which is right now stopped. I'm a little bit late, I would have liked to have gone out in the outgoing tide, but it's just at that point, but at least I'm not rowing against it and we'll come in on the incoming. I'm going to go over the kayak, I'm going to go over the gear for you guys that want to get into kayak fishing. I recommend it, it's a great sport and it's a great pastime and it's a great hobby as well. It's also a great way of sustaining yourself, getting fish for your family, your loved ones and your friends. The thing that's good about it is that you're in a very stealth craft. It's not like a tin boat which upsets the rhythm of the sea and causes that vibration which scares the fish away. And I've caught fish in this kayak in places where other boats, stabby crafts, just haven't tin boats, plastic boats even, uh, because the plastic boats with the motors on generally have four guys walking around on them. So if you're fishing in shallow water, noise upsets the harmonics and it scares the fish away. Let's go over the gear that we've got on today and why I'm using what I'm using. I've got some burley in here and you can use whatever burley you like. This is a mix of uh, burrito and other stuff in here and I've already got it put into the cradle so I'm not mucking around out at sea with it. Underneath here I've got a spare paddle in there. So if I do lose my paddle over the side, I've got a spare one and I always make sure it's at the front of the boat because it can slide to the back. I've got an anchor which is small enough to hold me and I don't use the pulley system, I just run it off that although I do have a pulley system but this works fine. I carry two knives on board, I've got one there and I've also got one on my body for safety reasons. The paddle is adjustable so it's adjustable uh, the length for my arm length and stroke and I set that to how I want to set it. I take, take something warm with me as well. I don't stick anything in here. At the back of the boat I've got a wee hand line which I probably won't use with a hook. I've got a thermos flask. I've got my bin. Normally this could have ice on it. Because I'm winter fishing and there's hardly any fish out there, I'm not even expecting to catch fish, but I'm just going out to have a look around. We'll see how we get on with that. A small landing net, and then I've got all my gear, which is my mostly slow jigs hooks. The reel is from patron Mason Cowan. Thanks Mason. I'm using a 25 gram lure. That's for kahuai, and I'm actually using quite a thick uh, monofilament on that there leader. So it's uh, going to remain hopefully impossible for the fish to see. And you can see my join is there. It's a bit short. Normally you want your leader to be twice the length of the rod or more. This is my favourite rod. It's a Taikabora. It's a parabolic rod. And as you can see the eyes are twisted as you go up. But they actually twist and they go around eventually. So it's upside down at the other end, which is a clever idea. That one's facing that way and then we get down to the bottom. It's facing this way where it comes off the reel. The reel's a Maxil reel. Uh, the rod is made by Jigstar, and currently on it I've got my favourite slow jig, which is a junky jig, and this is the Falcor. The boat that I'm using is my father's old kayak, it's a Prowler 13. It's caught a lot of fish, and it served me well. Right, let's put it in the water and get out there and see if we can find something. You never know, it's just a matter of looking for birds. I don't use fish finders. I just read the, I read the water, I read what's on the top, and I also read what's on the bottom, and I also use burley to increase my chances to bring fish in around me. I'm also using uh, a Hero 10, and I'm filming with a Hero 9. Come in here and pick up some bait. Some nice big mussels here. And this one here is a big one. It's been down here for a while. It's a good sized mussel. This would be actually a good feed this. You could eat these guys. Awesome houseboat. Beautiful looking vessel. Lovely lines. It's Crazy Horse Island. The technical name for it is Bullivan's Island, but I know it is Crazy Horse Island. The horse once got stranded on there and went crazy. Here's a go. That's how it earned that name. We're just passing the wharf with all the boutiques, the cafes, the pub, the restaurants, little shops. So if you're going to do a mission like this, uh, where you're going away by yourself, first of all make sure you have at least one form of communication. I've got a personal locator beacon which is on the inside of this here, what's well, actually fixed in. It's a rescue link, which is a must. I've got a maritime one so it's, it floats and it becomes disconnected or can't get waterlogged because it is waterproof. I've also got a, a cell phone in here in the, in the front as well, which I'm not going to take out, but right down there. And in the front I've got flares if I get into trouble and I need to actually uh, put one up. I would only be probably ever using that if I was way out at sea and in trouble. 
so far to date I've been fishing for years and never had to do either but it's an insurance you can't go out without and I've moved to these life jackets recently because the inflatable sometimes fail. On my right hand side is Rabbit Island and over here is the leisure park of Mapua. Uh, traditionally it's been a nudist park. Not too far to go, we'll be at the open sea. There's people down upon their lot. Oh. We got a hit, we got a hit, we got a hit by the mouth, we got a hit. Yeah, we're on, we're on, we're on. Woohoo! Shit! That's a good one too. I was just singing a song and next time I get hit, just singing along and next minute, bang. Yo beauty, you bloody beauty. We ain't got it in the boat yet, that's a good one. It's a good fish. It's a good fish. I'm trying to turn me around here and I'm in a place where there's a few ways too. Shit. Oh, not a good place to rot in the mouth yet. Oh, I lost it. I lost it. I was going for the landing and I bloody lost it. Ah! We've been going for now an hour and 15 minutes and that's the final marker. So we're getting out pretty far now. There's no more markers. We've been in open sea for quite a while. And sometimes in the summertime you get kingfish hanging around this structure here. Although I don't believe this time of year. Having said that, uh, yeah, a global warming thing, yeah, maybe there's a few hanging around. So we're gonna go a few more hundred meters out and then uh, drop the pick and put some burley down and do some slow jig fishing. So I've had a test of the water, it's about five meters here to six. I wanna go a little bit deeper. I don't believe it. We actually have a bloody fish on there. Can you believe that? The size of that. I've been towing it along and didn't realize I've been hit. Bloody little cow is he still alive even? That would explain why I didn't get a hit. After I lost the last one, this has hit me the whole time and it's so small I didn't even hit, feel it. Oh, good bait. <laughs> Jeez, okay. Hard case. They just go for fish almost their, like their own size, don't they? He's, he's pretty dead. Crazy. That explains why I wasn't getting any hits. Right, this is as far as I want to go, boys and girls. Nice and quiet down to Davy Jones's locker. And a burley. Burley can go just down there. Well, that's a bloody feed right there, isn't it? Got a very light sinker. So just plonk that over the side. Well, the birdie's starting to work. What I may do is I may put a sabiki rig on, because the birdie's probably going to bring some smaller fish in. Oh. Cheers, guys. Hope you're having a good one wherever you are. That's good. Cup of tea in the winter time. No, no takers yet. Bird is starting to go out. Give it time, something will happen. Something will die. Dead low tide now. It hit. I wasn't even doing anything with it. Something just hit it. Not a big fish. Oh, it's a bloody shark. Bloody old shark, eh? Jeez, it was playing like a... Had me going for a minute there, I thought we got a nice brim on. Now the old sharks are starting to come around, are they? Jeez. The bay's full of sharks, okay. Calm down, calm down. Yep, we caught enough of you guys yesterday. The old burley's starting to work. Spotting dogfish. I really thought for a minute there I had something better. Calm down, buddy, calm down. How are we going to get this out eh? Ooh, the old tail doing the old flick. Yeah, where is the spine? It's bloody there, isn't it? So we want to go right there where he can't get us. Right in the middle. So there's a spine on each side. You got both bloody hooks in, eh? That was a bit clever, wasn't it, eh? Both of them. How'd you manage that? How'd you manage to get both in? It's hard enough to get one of them. There's one out for you. Hey, you silly bugger. You're probably going to guess like swim away and come back and do it again, aren't you? Don't you move your head and hook that other hook into me. I know you want to do that, don't you? You'd love to. I'm just trying to help you out here. I know guys that just cut you guys' heads off. Hey, cheeky bugger. Gonna, gonna give, give it up. Gonna give it up. Gonna give that up. Come on, there we go. The old spiny dogfish, eh? Now you just bugger off and don't come back. Come on, there you go. Piss off and don't come back. Not a sausage, eh? Nothing at all. That's been down for about half an hour and nothing at all. 
So far we've got nothing at all on the bait, so we're going to go to another plan. We're going to put on a sabiki rig, it's an 8, I want something bigger than an 8, I don't know if we've got anything bigger than an 8. No, we'll go for a 10. Now uh, these were sent to me by my mate uh, Mark Rudolph, thanks Mark. Got a sabiki up one side, a slow jig on this side here, starboard sabiki, port, slow jig. So far I'm just getting hit by sharks, I've had four that I've released now. Which uh, is not the target species, I'll tell you that. And it's getting bloody cold, and there's rain clouds in front of me. We're not looking too good. Yeah, it's getting cold out here. Almost time to turn around, I think. Might drink some more hot tea and try to warm the inside of it, but my fingers are full. Just got something on the junkie jig, and I think it's probably another bloody shark. I was just changing lures. It's playing like a shark. Oh, yeah, another bloody shark. I think I'm all sharked out, guys. Just been one after another today, and. Um, I don't know what number this is, but uh, I think we're going to call it quits. The wind's come up, there's cloud formation, there's rain over there, or over there, and this is all I'm hooking into. Not without lack of trying, that's for sure. She's not good. Rightio. We'll sort this guy out and then um, I think we'll tow a couple of lures in. The old junky jigs catch bloody everything up here. We just want to don't get those spines here. Okay, old mate, what do you got, two in or one? Just one, we can deal with that a bit easier than two. You don't want to get the spine of these things in you, they just are murderous, they hurt like crazy. He's trying to get me all the time, but I've got him where he can't. Although they're pretty good at twisting around, he's still getting you. Go on, bugger off. I'm going to take this off, right now this, uh, this jig. This junky jig, just clip it there. That's the foul court. A very good uh, slow jig generally for catching fish if they're there, but just there's just nothing down there today. It's just not happening. And I'm going to put this one on. That's a uh, 25 gram slice, and the other one's a 28, slightly bigger. Well, the sun's come out the shine. Nice. Been a long paddle coming back in. Other than a grey boy shark hitting my lure, I've had nothing else. Been a strange day fishing. No, we're still not home yet. We could get hit on the way home, but it's not looking too hopeful. Fish on. What in the channel? Oh, did I lose it? That's about some cowboy. Got two fish on. Same time. Shit. I don't think the other one's on now. That's okay. In the boat. Yes. Nah, it's still on. Doubles. Just hit like that when I come in. Happy days. Or is it snag on the ground? It's coming pretty fast if it is still on. Ooh, it might still be on, eh? <laughs> I think it is. Jeez, all that fishing out at sea and they come in here and you get smacked straight away by two. Just went through the right place. Yeah, he's on. Oh, I'm not going to muck around with the landing net. I'm just going to try and get this guy straight in the boat if we can. goes, two on the boat. How about that? Doubles, just when I was to catch nothing. Well, just took a pee, and I see a few birds over here working. I can see the birds making their way straight down there. Straight ahead about 250 metres. So we're going to go down and hit that, and see if we can put another cast over it. We're basically chasing them. Got the tide coming on, I'm paddling against as well. Fishing just like hunting is a numbers game. I catch rabbits and snares. People go, how do you do it? And I say, well, it's numbers. You set three or four snares, you generally don't catch a rabbit. You smack out 20 to 30 snares, you can average one rabbit out of 20 snares. Fishing's the same, it's in hours. How much time are you prepared to spend in the water? When you're kayak paddling, that means you're putting in the hard yards of paddling all the time, or being out at water for a long time, just waiting. And sooner or later, the fish will feed and if you're in the right place at the right time you'll get hit. And currently I'm not in the right place and it's not the right time but the time can change and so can the place as this day unfolds. And I'm always optimistic that it will unfold and change. One thing about a crisis, whether you're hunting or fishing or whatever's going on in your life, the crisis always pass and then good times come again. Same applies to fishing and hunting. Oop. Strike. Strike. Strike now. Strike. Is he still on? It sure is. Jeez, it's running. 
That's a running fish. Well, oh, that's a good fish. That's a good fish. That's a good fish. We'll just keep the pressure on there, boy. Oh, holy shit, I'm gonna get spooled here. I'm gonna tighten that up a bit. You can't have that, mate. You're running with it, eh? Oh, yeah. See that running there? I've got this set really, really strong because there's a big fish out here today. And uh, I'm really testing my gear. It's coming in fast now, but he's going to start fighting again in a minute. I've got a boat coming out too. Bad timing. Bad timing. I'll try and get him in close. He's taking me actually upstream. Well, this is good. I'm not uh, having any great ex expectation I'm going to get it in the boat. He's going to rise in a minute. I can see what's going to happen. He's going to come up. There he goes. There he goes. He's a good fish. Hey, trying to kick it out, aren't you? Let's see if we can get him a bit closer. Oh, he's trying to spit it again. Oh, he's going to drive. He's going to dive. He's not ready for coming in yet. He's not ready for coming in. And you can rush this. I don't want to high stick that rod. See, I'm keeping it parallel to the water. That's how you snap rods, as I have found out. And keep the pressure on. Get the pressure on. Look at that set just nicely, that tension. So he's really working. He's a big fish. He's a big fish. And he's testing my gear. He's dived. He's going under. He's going backwards. Oh, he's really fighting. He's fighting like fury. Kahawai is such a fighting fish. Just keep the pressure on him. Oh, he's really giving me a test. He's going he's to rise again. No, not quite. Let's see if we can get that head up. We can get that head up. There he comes. Got the landing ready. Oh, shit. Oh, right by the boat. There we go. In the net, in the net. We got another big one, boys and girls. We got another beauty, and he's a cracker. Oh, the weight of that in there. The weight of that. The weight of that in the net. That's a bloody big fish. Look at that. That's going to feed a lot of people. Another cracker. That's a big fish. That's a big fish. I'm a happy chap. Going to bleed him. He'll go in the smoke of this guy. They're not a great sashimi fish when they're this big, but boy, do they make good smoking fish. And uh, bleeding it out is important. I'm going to just... Oh, that's a bit of blood now coming out. Put that over the side and get rid of some of that blood. Oh, he's bleeding out beautifully. That'll bring in a shark or two. Beautifully. <laughs> oh, look at that. Life is good. Ain't gonna get any better than this. Not even gonna fit in the bloody bin. He's not gonna fit in the bin. It's been a while since I heard a car white didn't fit in the bin. We're on. We're doing it. I'm physically shattered right now. Just about to hit the wall, so I've been paddling non-stop since I come up in here for an hour and a half. And all the other paddling I've done today, so I'm gonna come in and just cast up the shore for a while until I get my breath back. I've got a fish on too. I've got a bloody fish on as I was coming in. I'm gonna get this on the beach. Shit. That's hard case. What was coming in? Just hit me as we're coming in. This would be a good one to get on the beach. Get the legs to rest and still catching fish. How good's that? Happy days. Happy days. Get my kayak up a bit more before it drifts away because the tide is rising right now. It's coming up. Oh, I am feeling it, guys. I am feeling it. I am pretty tired. Whew. Another good one, I reckon. Another biggie. He's not, gonna, he's not gonna wanna come in here, eh? I'm gonna need a landing net. He's gonna rise, he's gonna rise. There he goes, he's a big eel, right? He's rising again, he's trying to spit it. Oh, he's trying to spit it. Here he comes. He's a bloody cracker. Oh, he's gonna try and rise again. In shallow water, he's, I need to come bring him back down here because I need that net. He's gonna come up, here we go. It's like a big salmon, look at that. Oh, he doesn't want to come in. Ooh. I have three children. He's trying to get out. She's he's a fighting fish. Life depends on it, mate. It's like a big bloody salmon. Oh, the cow, here we go. This one. Here we go. Ah, oh, you beauty on the beach. Didn't even need the landing net. What a cracker, eh? What a cracker. Another good one. You were never going to get away, buddy. You were never going to get that one out. You got all three barbs in there. You've done yourself a mischief, good and proper. Isn't it amazing how 
can start off having a shit day fishing and it can turn itself around just like that another good fish I'm gonna bleed that guy give him the knife put him in the bin fish right here I've gone to a 40 gram uh, which will put me out far but actually I don't need to go out far because there's fish right in front of me right here that'll do it right there right in close we're gonna get hit right here and they're big fish feeding let's see if he's gonna give me a hit straight away I'm pretty confident I'm gonna get smacked there because I saw him rise there this is gone is he chasing it it's a big lure it'll only catch big fish it won't catch smaller ones it's like twice as big as I've been using we'll have another crack and try that again and go too far out it's far enough he's just in close he's just feeding in here close oh we're on we're on and I've got a twist in my line too shit we're on and I've got a twist here I've got a problem oh I didn't see what was going on there righto you see what's happening oh shit jeez need to get this down here oh no 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 this is not good I'm trying to get this tangle out I haven't got it right I haven't got this right at all I need to go over the top here it's a big fish and I've got a bloody tangle. Got to go through here like this and around there. How the hell did I do that? I did that when I was changing my lure. Oh shit, it's a big one too. That's why I said that I use a big lure, get a big fish. Right, start walking backwards. I had to walk down here. The tide's coming up, so I've got to keep an eye on my kayak. This guy's going to probably go out to here in a minute. That was a good strategic move to put that lure on, but it was a dumb move to get it twisted around there. Oh, it's got, got a twist around here too. How the hell have I done that? Oh, I see what's happened. It's come off that eye. For some reason, I'm not through, through that eye. Okay. Shit, we've got a problem. We missed a bloody... I didn't even realise that's happened. We're missing a bloody... What the hell's going on here? I've got a fish on and this has come off there. Right, eight, we're still on. Bugger me. This is a good lure. It's a real big one. That's a big fish. I'd like to get this guy in. I don't know quite how we've come off that eye, it's broken or what's happened. It's just come right off here. I don't know how that's possibly even happened. It's got me stuffed. Oh. Let's see if we can get this guy to. Oh, she's been a massive day fishing. Brilliant day. I'll never forget this day. My boots are full of water. I'm hungry, I've freezing cold hands, but there he goes. I'm gonna try to get him in now in the shallow. This is where he's gonna try and run for it right here. And on the bloody beach. Look at that, eh? I've just put the kayak on the roof, gear on the back. I'll be honest with you, I'm shattered. I'm absolutely freezing cold, hungry, but I've got a full bin of fish. Well, almost a full bin, enough. I ran out of GoPro batteries on both my GoPros, so uh, couldn't film you anymore. Oh, jeez. That was a mission and a half. But a good one. We've got fish for everybody. We've got fish for my dad. I've got fish for my mum. have got fish for my brother. Hillary and Margaret at the homestead. We've got fish for Damo if he didn't catch any when he comes back through. We've got fish for Julie. Gonna drop some off to Awe if she wants some. I'll just her a message. And I'm I'm just shattered and I'm hungry because I haven't eaten since this morning and I've just not stopped paddling. The only time I stopped paddling was when on the beach. So the body feels like a gorilla. I was gonna go pig hunting in the morning, but I'm having a sleep and I need to a bit of repair, I think, because uh, the old boy's not quite as powerful as he used to be, but I clocked up a lot of case. Get in here, you silly little bastard. Just Murray. My neighbor Murray coming over, get some uh, fish for him. There you go. I went out yesterday and I caught a whole whole lot of kawai and I went the day before and caught a snapper. Did you? Right out here, yep. Sure. Caught a snapper about that big, which uh, we cooked up, yeah. So, um, and the kawai yesterday were all good, good, good fish. Good for the smoker. So, uh, you don't want to drop the guts out of that, I didn't have time to last night. You got it? Yep. There you go. Pretty fish for you and Mary anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Smoke the bugger up. Yeah, no, what are you going to use to smoke that? Um, I still got some bloody um, cherry. Oh, yeah, some cherry. And, uh, and, um, yeah, and a bit of manuka mixed with it. Because last time you gave me a Kentucky barrel one that was smoked, it was yeah. bloody nice. Yeah, yeah, well, there's a bit of that left, but yeah. 
the, I, I haven't seen it in the fucking thing for some time. What do you reckon about the apple? Smoking fish. Yeah, yeah, I used to use it. Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. Because it's quite a sweet smoke. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, it's okay. So I might do some apple today. Get the chainsaw out and find a bit of dry stuff. Or... Yeah, we've got plenty of that over the paddock over there. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Got heaps of... Always good to give Murray some fish. He's my neighbour. I dropped three fish off to Awi last night on the way home, put them in that letterbox. She'll be happy. I like to give my fish away so people that can't catch them have got something to eat themselves. And I've got plenty left for everybody else. This is a, uh, a knife that I got at the refuge station for a dollar. It's a prestige knife, it's not actually a filleting knife. And this is an old used diamond stone that I also paid a dollar for. It's already used, but what you can do when they're stuffed is use them slightly on the edge rather than how they're supposed to be used. If you tilt it, they often have a bit of stuff left that people don't use. So I'm getting a bit of an edge on this knife. So I'm going to see if I can actually fill it fish with this. It's a rough knife. I actually ran out of batteries last night when I was filming, so there was actually a bit more fishing I did. What I ended up doing was take my phone out and doing a live TikTok feed and show people the rest of it. Right, we'll see how we get on with this bloody knife. Because I don't, uh, I don't think I should hold my breath at being very good. Oh, look at this. They're in ice, nice and frozen. I think I'm going to give that a bit of a wipe first for something. Not a wash, a wipe. Never put your fish in uh, fresh water. Guys do, I don't. Two reasons. It can contaminate the fish because there's little microbes in the fresh water that can contaminate it and cause it to become really bad. And the other thing is it makes the taste and smell shit too. So I'm going to give that a wipe and come back. Truth be known, you probably can put a bit of fresh water on the fish when it's still got its skin on, it's intact because they are waterproof. But definitely not on your flesh. But still I'm going to just wipe that like that. The good old Hilux tailgate. Many a fish has been fitted on these, not to mention pork cooked up on them. We've had feeds cooked up on the back of this. It's a great little uh, workbench, isn't it? Such a nice big fish. Right, how's this knife gonna go? Oh, not flash, not flash. Not flash at all. I've had worse, I've had better. It's just not very sharp. Anyway. I don't have a filling knife right now, it disappeared, so we'll make do with what we've got as best that we can and uh, be happy for that. Through the ribs, straight down the guts on the spine, angling towards the spine as we go down. Now we're going to do something different here guys, we're going to, as you can see I've got the scales on, you always leave scales on when you're smoking fish, because we're going to be smoking this. It stops it sticking to the tray, but I'm going to go right through the tail. Normally, if I wanted to fill it there, I'd be flicking it over, and I'd be going up there and taking it off, but we're keeping it on. For the simple reason that I want to have that on there. Beautiful. That's going to be a nice big fillet. There's one up there, and we'll do the other side. And a nice big fillet. So, these wings here, lovely part of the fish, but also so that belly is nice as well, so we're going to keep that on. Find that little hinge in there. That is for my dogs, and they love kahawai. They just love it. Just to butterfly that out. That's going to go on the smoker just like that. Be beautiful. This time I'm going to do a different thing. I'm going to fill up the fish, like you would do if you were just like taking fresh fillets off. It's really convenient to have ice, so the next day you come home after fishing in your bucket, leave the fish in the bin, and you can deal with them in your own leisure. I like that idea and that concept. I'm trying to keep the knife as close to the spine as I can. Flip that over, get a clean off on the edge of the board, go to about there. Take our skin off in one motion. Skin's off.
Without a doubt, the easiest way to wrap your fish up is a bit of glad wrap. Uh, you can fart around with snap lock bags, but I don't know. I think this is a lot easier. Just seems to go pretty quick. Take that scale out of there because we don't need that in there. And the uh, buddy here. The rest is going to be all good as. Check that out. Ready for the fridge. We're not going to freeze it, it's going to get eaten, but it's also just going to keep it nice and protected. In fact, I might give that one to Julie so she's got something to cook up at home. Friend of mine. Too easy, go tell your mother. It's going to go in our fridge for dinner, probably tomorrow night. A nice pile of fillets for either sashimi or pan frying or making anything you like with. And these are for the smoker. That's why I've left the scales on. Stops them sticking. Got a whole pile of wings. Nothing wasted. Is that not a fine sight? Just all that fish. Pink Himalayan salt. We're going to leave that for about 10 minutes. It will draw the moisture out of the fish. Local fishing guru Troy Dando grew these. Canine peppers at Rada Farms. Great peppers if you want to get some guys. Check them out. Gonna chop these guys up fine on the board. This is honey from our own bees. Give it a good stir up. I'm using a little fork that was actually made by Ezra Hansen. Thank you, Ezra. Uh, better than a spoon, you can spread it better. I learnt from Patron Heck. Don't use a spoon, a steel spoon in your honey. It destroys the makeup of it. Use wooden spoons or wooden forks, whatever you want. So we're just going to spread that, it's got the salt in. this is actually the whole two wings. And then on top of that, we're going to put our little bits of chilli. Thank you Troy. Not too much, just a little bit to make it a little spicy treat when you go through it. What are you doing, Super Duck? Hey? What you hacking around here for, eh? What you doing, mate? Where's the story? No mucking around. Your beak's dirty. Your beak's dirty. Let me clean that. Come here. Now I'm going to clean your beak. Come here. 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 Super duck. On top of my native wood, I'm putting apple wood. And my sawdust that I've just made with a chainsaw over here, that's also apple wood. That's what we're going to be smoking with today. She's very organic, this stuff. The duck's been trying to bloody eat it. Thinks it's uh, some sort of feed. Oh yeah, it's going to smoke straight away. Bloody good. you looking pretty good I'm gonna take some of my woods out now I'm gonna pull them out so she uh, burns a bit less because I don't want to overheat it it's gonna make a little fire beside it and feed it as it go it's good it's had about 20 minutes a little bit longer than I normally would but they're quite big fish so we'll have a wee sneaky look oh no looking great looking awesome Take this off there. So everything's very hot. Oh yes, that's what we want. So you want it to be just starting to crack, just like that. That's what we call nice hot smoked fish. And I'm doing this for everybody else today. I've got Hillary, Margaret, and Julie and Tristan having this. And that looks like the bizzo. But we do have to have a little taste test. The wings are always my favourite. Let's see if we can smash that bit there. Oh, you can taste the chilli and the honey. Oh, that apple wood is the best to smoke with. Everybody's just going to love that. That is absolutely delicious. Try this recipe. You're going to just love it. You're going to love it. Remember, don't cook your fish too much. Just till it's just starting to crack. Then take it out, take the heat off. It's just not going to happen, mate, because you're on a diet, okay? You're on a diet. 
because you're too fat. The vet said you're gonna lose a kg, you're on diet, okay? You're not having it. That's what we're looking for, those cracks in the fish. It's just starting to go now. Just divine, just delicious. Chilery. I've just said that the ladies smoke fish. I think it's fair to say they're going to love it. I've tried it myself and it is divine. Right. Hillary's having a sneaky taste. Yeah, I can't wait till I sit down to do this. So okay. I'm now. Oh. Oh. That's oh, really good. good. Isn't it? Oh, it's so moist. That's really Yummy. good. That's better than anything you can buy from down the road, I reckon. Oh, it's the best I've done mm. so far. I just haven't mm. ever, I've never actually got it that good before, eh? That's really good. Yeah, just keeping mm. an eye on the whole mm. time. So what that is, apple smoked. Mm. Oh, right. With Himalayan salt, honey, and the peppers from Troy. Yep. And I've just given all the right amount of time, so you'll really enjoy that, Tucker. I can taste those peppers from Troy. Yeah, there's not much in there, it's only a tiny <laughs> little bit. I can taste them at all. Yeah, yeah just mix it with a bit of vegetables. It should give it a nice mm. bite though, eh? Mm, I can Definitely. Well, you're a redhead. You can take a bit of red hot chilli pepper. Yeah, no. Redheads don't do chillies very much. Oh, don't they? No, they're sweet. It's because you're hot enough already, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. I can't taste the chilli at all. Okay, it's interesting. You're not a redhead, that's why. No. Some good bastard gave me this reel here, Margaret, a while ago, in a rod. I'm going to change over to using that for kitchen those bigger car wires. I was using a small one. Wasn't quite cutting it, so that's going to be my new one anyway. Sorry, that's just a technical talk that you're probably not really that interested in. <laughs> oh, well. Catches the fish which we love to eat. Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys mind me filming when you're eating? No. I just, someone had a comment there and I just thought maybe I shouldn't be filming while you're eating. No, no, not mind. I've just got to see it properly. What are you doing? Polishing up my glasses so I can see it properly. See your food properly? <laughs> okay. It's a wing, it's my favourite part, the wing. I've got a bone up my nose. Did you get a bone up your nose? <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> but it was worth it. But you never had a bone up there before. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's worth it though. Yeah, it's really lovely. It's sweeter than that. Mm, yeah. Well, it's got That's what yeah. wing, wings are like though, aren't they? They are they? sweet, yeah. 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 Get a chilli? Mm-hmm. A little bit hot. You know, might have a drippy <laughs> nose. You have a bone up and you have a dribble nose. <laughs> It's sweet though. Mm. That's our honey mm. from our bees. Oh, it's beautiful. Mm. Goes well, doesn't it, with the chilli? Oh, it does. Mm. And the Himalayan salt. The nicest sweet fish I've had. And that's honest. The nicest honest. you've ever had? Yeah. Wow. It's just beautiful. I think Pace thinks he's going to get some nature pace. Till he waiting there. Ain't going to happen, guys. <coughs> have you had much smoked fish, Margaret? Mm. Just, I'm going to keep that to last. Yeah. But have mm. you had much smoked fish in your life before? No. No, not only the tin stuff. A lot of people don't like it much, eh, smoked fish? There's some people that don't. Well, it could be... Some of, some fish can be quite strong, yeah. you know, but this is beautiful. Mm. It's actually going to be beautiful. And no, I have never been privileged to having fresh smoked fish. Well, there's going to be heaps more coming, because mm. I'm catching right now. Mm, hey guys, it's my catch and cook video. Uh, good luck with your own fishing out there, and providing for the people you love and yourself. I hope it's going well for you. Smash the like button if you made it to the end. And thanks for watching again. And be good, can't be good, be careful. I'll see you soon. See you later.